Hi, I'm Shirley Solis, author of the best-selling book, Not Just Tacos, and catalyst to help revive the family to live with joy, purpose, and contribution. A few days ago, I released the second video in this series to help you learn how to build character and strong work ethics in your children. If you missed any of the previous videos, click the pause button and go watch it now. The feedback has been phenomenal, and I wouldn't want you to miss it. Today, I want to talk to you about the number one stress for parents with more than one child. Can you guess what it is? That's right, sibling rivalry. When our family traveled around the country providing resources and workshops to the homeschooling community, this was always the number one question. How do we get our children to stop arguing? Sibling rivalry not only brings chaos to the family, but it also leaves us exhausted emotionally and physically with no real solution because round two is usually around the corner. Even worse is when the children fight in front of others only to let others know that you're not the perfect parent and that your family is not the perfect family. The very first thing I realize when dealing with conflict is that most of us need to redefine our definition of conflict. Conflict tends to have a negative connotation and for that reason, we tend to avoid it. Since most of us weren't trained on solving conflict, we think that when it happens, it's a bad thing. When conflict is seen as a negative thing, then each party is a rival, you know, enemies. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. And in our minds, that translates to the idea that someone gets hurt. Over the years, I learned that conflict is actually a normal occurrence. And honestly, it should happen more often. Conflict helps us to grow in character and really test who we are. With proper conflict resolution, each side learns from the conflict, the relationship gets stronger, and each party becomes a team player and no longer enemies. If we handle conflict properly, then solving the conflict shouldn't be stressful and something that we avoid. I would encourage you to reframe the idea of conflict as a positive experience that must be embraced. Believe me, with the proper tools, solving a conflict would not be so difficult and you'll get better with practice because there will be plenty of times to practice. Now, can you imagine how your life would have been different if your idea of conflict would have been a positive one? So think how beneficial this is going to be for your children when you teach them to reframe their own definition of conflict and the proper way to resolve it so they can make the most out of it from a young age. Let's assume your children just got into an argument and they come running to you. Each is yelling and you really don't want to deal with it. So step one, stop and think that this is a good thing. This is a God-given opportunity to teach your children to solve a conflict and to mold their character. If you don't teach it to them, life will. And life is usually much harder on them than you are. Step two, evaluate whether they need mediation or if they're capable of solving this on their own. Have you given them the tools to solve a problem in the past? If you haven't, you probably need to mediate. Step three, if you're getting involved, evaluate each party's emotional state. If any of them is angry and is being offensive, speak to each one of them individually. Step four, ask each of your kids to explain what happened calmly and respectfully. Ask the other to listen empathetically, putting themselves on the other's shoes. Step five, ask each to share how he or she feels. You want to help them verbalize things like, I feel hurt when you take my things. I feel betrayed when you play with other kids more than with me. I don't feel loved when you make fun of me. You want them to express their emotions without blame. Avoid expressions like, you make me feel blank. Sentences should focus on I, not on you. Step six, ask each person to analyze and explain what he or she is responsible for them. If each one of them is having a hard time seeing their part, then try to explain to them in different ways. If that still doesn't work, then continue to work with the other person and leave this one person to think through what happened. They may not understand at the moment because of conflicting emotions. It might be easier to talk to them later. There have been many times when I haven't been able to convince a child of their wrongdoing, and that's okay. I realize that every person is different and learns at different times. Step seven. Encourage forgiveness on each part. When there's an argument, each party has usually offended the other. So forgiveness will usually happen on both parts. I usually teach my children to say, 
please forgive me, rather than I'm sorry or I apologize. I think the words forgive me usually carry a little more depth of heart. Wouldn't you agree? Step eight, ask each what they are willing to give up in order to reach a resolution. Help them to see what is most important and what they can learn from this. When we begin to encourage a peaceful family culture, your children will embrace the idea of getting along more and more. I know that the steps above will help you coach at disagreement between the kids and truthfully anyone, even in your marriage. And believe me, after several tries, you will feel much more confident to embrace a conflict and deal with it correctly. Do keep in mind though, that if the habit of bickering and fighting between the children has been ingrained for a while, it may take some time to build a new habit, but persevere and you will definitely see good results in due time. In the next video, I will share what I think is the number one problem to our children lacking character. And as always, I will provide a solution and the opportunity for you to join me along with a community of parents who are actively building character with their children and building strong relationships in the family. In the comment box below, share how your family saw conflict growing up and how that has influenced you in handling conflict with your kids. Don't forget to share this video with your family, friends, and neighbors. They won't be up for long, so make sure they get in on the action too. See you soon.